Last time we looked at the four main characteristics used to classify light. Today we will look at part 2. How to take outdoor lighting photos? As you know, natural light is the best light quality in a photo. However, sometimes too strong light or the photographer's lighting on a cloudy day uses a reflector due to the intensity or lack of shadows. When it comes to outdoor photography, background choices are the first thing photographers think about, but above all, photographers tend to consider the quality of light. Today, we will look at shooting techniques. Light quality, amount of light, and angle of outdoor shooting. Lens selection considering the shooting environment and style. What do you consider before taking outdoor photos? First of all, it's a top priority to prepare a lens. That suits your intentions. Before heading to the outdoor shooting site. In outdoor shooting, there can be three shooting styles. That focus on the background, to the portrait, and focus on the portrait. at the beautiful Olympia Bay area in Washington state. It feels quite different. On the other hand, if you want to give full weight to the beautiful Olympia Bay area shots, as shown in the picture on the right, you should definitely choose a telephoto lens. The telephoto lens organizes the surroundings with a narrow angle of view and out of focusing with a shallow depth of field and provides optimal performance for expressing immersion that focuses. If you want to take a snapshot with the Olympia Bay background and bush is highlighted as in the picture on the left, it is recommended to use a 50mm angle of view lens similar to what we see in 35 mm conversion. What is the difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens? The main difference between prime and zoom lenses is in their focal length. The focal length of prime lenses such as 35 mm 50 mm, 85 mm, and will always remain the same. Sometimes photographers can use sunlight to separate the subject from the background, using backlight from behind the subject's head. However, photographers usually use metering primarily to create smooth photos. It can be helpful to know how to use reflectors and covers in outdoor shooting. Most reflectors and covers can be combined to provide multiple options of white, silver, gold, and black sides and diffusers. First, sometimes a reflector can also be used as the main light source. Second, you can use a reflector to fill the light. The most common use of reflectors is to reflect light in a soft state. Position the subject so that the light shines from behind. Then use a reflector to reflect the light back onto the face. There is a nice soft light on the subject's face and dramatic rim lighting can appear behind the head.
third. You can also block it from strong light by using a reflector. You can create a beautiful, shady soft light. That comes through the leaves under the tree to illuminate. The left side of the subject. Use the entire area around the shot as a reflector. Cloudy gray skies can be huge reflectors. Once you get used to this, you can see reflected light everywhere. A white building or anything that shines in the sun can be used as a huge reflector for beautiful photos. It's easier to learn about photography and cameras. If you can attend community college photography group classes or college classes, today we looked at the types of light one by one according to the direction of the light. At next, I will explain window light photography and studio lighting photography in succession. I had explained how to practice as simple and easy as possible, but if you understand this, camera shooting seems not that difficult. In the next video, I will show you some more informative aspects of photography.